The current situation involving COVID-19 requires specific procedures regarding patient care. This new EMS protocol will guide you when encountering possible and confirmed cases of COVID-19. Most patients with confirmed COVID-19 have developed fever, cough, difficulty breathing, or shortness of breath, muscle aches, and fatigue. There are certain epidemiologic factors that may help guide evaluation decisions. These include a history of travel from affected geographic areas within 14 days of symptom onset. Any persons, including healthcare workers, who have had close contact with a laboratory confirmed or suspicion of COVID-19 patient within 14 days of symptom onset. Close contact is defined as being within approximately six feet or two meters of a COVID-19 case for a prolonged period of time or having direct contact with infectious secretions of a COVID-19 case, for example, being coughed on. Note, close contact can occur while caring for, living with, visiting, or sharing a healthcare waiting area or room with a COVID-19 case. EMS provider practices should be based on the most up-to-date COVID-19 clinical recommendations and information from appropriate public health authorities and EMS medical direction. Using the most appropriate personal protective equipment is essential when dealing with possible and confirmed COVID-19 cases. EMS providers who will directly care for a patient with possible COVID-19 infection or who will be in the compartment with the patient should follow standard precautions and use the PPE as described here. The recommended PPE includes a face mask or N95 or higher level respirator. Face masks provide protection from splashes and sprays. An N95 or higher level respirator should be used when performing or present for any aerosol generating or high risk clinical procedures. Eye protection, such as goggles or disposable face shield that fully covers the front and sides of the face. Personal eyeglasses and contact lenses are not considered adequate eye protection. Patient examination gloves. Double gloving is preferred. An isolation gown. If there are shortages of gowns, they should be prioritized for aerosol generating procedures, care activities where splashes and sprays are anticipated, and high contact patient care activities that provide opportunities for transfer of pathogens to the hands and clothing of EMS clinicians. This includes moving a patient onto a stretcher. These recommendations for PPE also cover the provider driving the ambulance. Drivers who will provide direct patient care, such as moving patients onto stretchers, should wear all recommended PPE. After completing patient care and before entering an isolated driver's compartment, the driver should remove and dispose of PPE and perform hand hygiene to avoid soiling the compartment. If the transport vehicle does not have an isolated driver's compartment, the driver should remove their face shield or goggles, gown and gloves, and perform hand hygiene. A respirator or face mask should continue to be used during transport. All personnel should avoid touching their face while working. On arrival, after the patient is released to the facility, EMS clinicians should remove and discard PPE and perform hand hygiene. Used PPE should be discarded as normal. EMS providers should exercise appropriate precautions when responding to any patient with signs and symptoms of a respiratory infection. EMS providers should consider the specific signs, symptoms, and risk factors of COVID-19. If Public Safety Answering Point or PSAP call takers advise that the patient is suspected of having COVID-19, 
EMS providers should put on appropriate PPE before entering the scene. Initial assessment should begin from a distance of at least six feet from the patient if possible. Patient contact should be minimized to the extent possible until a face mask is on the patient. If COVID-19 is suspected, all PPE as described in this protocol should be used. If COVID-19 is not suspected, EMS providers should follow standard precautions and use appropriate PPE for evaluating a patient with a potential respiratory infection. A face mask should be worn by the patient for source control. If a nasal cannula is in place, a face mask should be worn over the nasal cannula. Alternatively, an oxygen mask can be used if clinically indicated. Limit the number of providers in the patient compartment during transport to essential personnel to minimize possible exposures. If you have a patient who has an exposure history, who shows signs and symptoms suggesting COVID-19, and who has been directed to a healthcare facility by EMS Medical Direction for further evaluation and management, the following actions should occur during transport. Consider contacting medical control for destination, determination, and or alternative transport operations based on the clinical impression of the patient. EMS providers should notify the receiving healthcare facility that the patient has an exposure history and signs and symptoms suggestive of COVID-19, so that appropriate infection control precautions may be taken prior to patient arrival. Keep the patient separated from other people as much as possible. Family members and other contacts of patients with possible COVID-19 should not ride in the transport vehicle if possible. If riding in the transport vehicle, they should wear a face mask. When possible, use vehicles that have isolated driver and patient compartments that can provide separate ventilation to each area. Isolate the ambulance driver from the patient compartment and keep pass-through doors and windows tightly shut. Close the door or window between these compartments before bringing the patient on board. During transport, vehicle ventilation in both compartments should be on non-recirculated mode to maximize air changes that reduce potentially infectious particles in the vehicle. If the vehicle has a rear exhaust fan, use it to draw air away from the cab toward the patient care area and out the back end of the vehicle. Some vehicles are equipped with a supplemental recirculating ventilation unit that passes air through HEPA filters before returning it to the vehicle. Such a unit can be used to increase the number of air changes per hour or ACH. If a vehicle without an isolated driver compartment and ventilation must be used, open the outside air vents in the driver area and turn on the rear exhaust ventilation fans to the highest setting. This will create a negative pressure gradient in the patient area. Follow routine procedures for a transfer of the patient to the receiving healthcare facility. For example, wheel the patient directly into an examination room. If possible, consult with medical control for specific guidance before performing aerosol generating procedures. An N95 or higher level respirator instead of a face mask should be worn in addition to other PPE as described in this program for EMS clinicians present for or performing generating procedures. EMS providers should exercise caution if an aerosol generating procedure is necessary. These include bag valve mask or BVM ventilation, oral pharyngeal suctioning, endotracheal intubation, nebulizer treatment, continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP, biphasic positive airway pressure, or BiPAP, or resuscitation involving emergency intubation or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. BVMs and other ventilatory equipment should be equipped with a HEPA or other viral filter to filter the expired air. 
EMS organizations should consult their ventilator equipment manufacturer to confirm appropriate filtration capability and the effect of filtration on positive pressure ventilation. If possible, the rear doors of the transport vehicle should be opened and the HVAC system should be activated during the performance of an aerosol generating procedure. This should be done away from pedestrian traffic. Allow enough time for the completion of the procedure and its therapeutic effect. As soon as the procedure is complete, secure the ambulance doors and transport the patient to the receiving facility. Regarding oxygenation, maintain an SpO2 level of greater than 90%. A nasal cannula with surgical mask placed over the cannula is the preferred method of oxygenation. Providers may use higher than normal flow rates, up to 7 liters per minute if needed to maintain the desired oxygen saturation. If the patient is persistently hypoxic despite use of a nasal cannula, apply a non-rebreather mask, or NRB. Restrict nebulizer treatments to patients who are exhibiting signs of moderate to severe bronchospasm or wheezing. Nebulizer therapy is associated with a significantly increased risk of coronavirus aerosol transmission and EMS provider exposure. A metered dose inhaler, or MDI, with a spacer, if it's available, is the preferred route of medication administration. Consider four to six puffs per dose of an MDI with a spacer, if available. This may be repeated every five minutes as needed. Use of the patient's MDI with the spacer, if it's available, is preferred. CPAP and BiPAP should be used with caution in suspected COVID-19 patients. CPAP and BiPAP is associated with a significantly increased risk of coronavirus aerosol transmission and EMS provider exposure. CPAP and BiPAP should still be considered in the patient who has other, more obvious reasons for their respiratory failure. For example, in the setting of recent weight gain, edema, and a history of cardiac disease. If EMS providers feel that it is essential, consider contacting medical control. Corticosteroids have shown no clinical benefit and may actually be harmful in patients with COVID-19. They should therefore be avoided in the non-critically ill patient. For AEMTs and paramedics, consider administering epinephrine 1 mg per milliliter at 0.3 mg IM in the lateral thigh, which is preferred. Endotracheal intubation should be avoided in suspected COVID-19 patients. Intubation is associated with a significantly increased risk of coronavirus aerosol transmission and EMS provider exposure. This is an incredibly high-risk procedure in terms of transmission and is best performed in a negative pressure room with the highest provider level and most experienced provider. If EMS providers feel that it is essential, consider contacting medical control. EMS providers should prepare to encounter possible and confirmed COVID-19 patients. This protocol will help ensure the safety of you, your crew, and the patient.